Good morning, everybody. Natalie coming to laugh. Spirit and coffee. Got the coffee here. Yum. <laughs> mm. Oh my gosh. What a crazy life we live in. Um, and, you know, things again are just, they're going to get crazier and crazier and crazier. So, you know, people um, get ready for the show, um, get ready for <laughs> what's about to happen. I mean, it's going to, things are just, you know, unfolding. It's the unfolding. It is like the lotus flower. It can unfold until the murk of all the murky happens. And then the flower just blossoms into this beautiful thing. Um, but the ugly has to show up first <laughs> before the beauty reveals itself, right? And it's magnificence. Um, just been crazy. And so not too sure how people are feeling. Um, you know, are you excited? Are you scared? Are you challenged? Um, you know, there's a lot going on. I know at least my friends, um, a lot of conversation and things that you can't escape um, from the social media. Um, I mean, from media in general, of uh, like the big events that are happening specifically, you know, here in the U.S. And things are getting crazy and wonky. And I think people are waking up and realizing that, um, you know, everything that was created was was created on false, you know, false things. It wasn't it, what is reality again. And we go into the consciousness of asking ourselves what is truly true, what is truly reality and how do we look at reality and create what we want to see in the world we've created this craziness um believe it or not um i know we want to believe that we have not but we have we've created this construct of civilization and you know society and um these norms that we live by and in that construct um we've dictated or we have declared what is right, what is righteous, what is not, what is law, what is not law. And we're at a point right now where the very fabric and the foundation is starting to dissipate and we're starting to question what is truly law? What is it? And again, our own spiritual principles and practices is what's needed at this point. It's a reminder. Um, again, Moses, um, as I said, just keeps showing up over and over. Noah as well. And I think Noah and Moses lend for a good, um, you know, good conversation in if you don't believe in the Bible stories, whatever. But it's a story, right? It's a story. And it's a story to give us some guidance and some grounding and understanding about the world that we see around us. And we know history repeats itself. And I believe that these two characters that they provide us or lend us an opportunity to really understand how we can utilize those practices or principles um, that they used within their own plot line to help us through a journey or through the story. Good morning, Michael through the stories that we're seeing unfold before our eyes, right? We're seeing a story, a plot that is being played out that is starting to unfold before us. And something that Moses provides again is that spiritual practice and laws. What are your laws? Good morning, Jerry. What are your laws? What are your spiritual practices, right? And what will you compromise and not compromise? Are you grounded in your own spiritual integrity? Or are you going to waver in your spiritual integrity, right? Moses stood with the staff and he said, these are the laws. And that's that, right? That That's just the way it is. Well, right now we're questioning the very foundation of our laws because we know that they're not really grounded in something that's spiritual and that's backed by God. If it was, it would be solid and it wouldn't be crazy all over the place, right? Natural law happens. Um, and part of, maybe perhaps it is part of the um, the uh, breaking up, right? Of the <laughs> structure itself. And that is a law. So we know that deconstruction, um, right? If we looked at spiritual law, which is natural law, which is nature. Nature's law 
is and prevails and is above all law, right? Human man-made law is human. We're so feeble. Like, I think we give ourselves way too much credit sometimes. <laughs> No, not putting anybody down, even myself. As humans, we give ourselves a little bit too much credit. Really, the reality, if we looked at the foundation, the very fabric of nature itself, it lives by the laws, its own laws that not were not given by man. The instruction of the law given to nature came from something greater than us. It, we don't have the ability, right, to like photosynthesize a plant or <laughs> to be the sun to shine to nurture and give it what you know we don't we're not water we're human and but the laws of the land give us some insight as to what is god's law unfolding in front of us right the universal law whatever you want to call it god universe creator whatever it is for you that we start to look and see the processes and patterns that are unveiled through those laws and we know that destruction or destruction is part of it right and that's part of the storyline so things are getting destroyed right now that's what's happening it's all coming unglued everything is all coming untangled it's kind of like your favorite shirt and then it like you could see the threads are coming apart and you're like, oh, darn, there's going to be a hole. And now the whole thing's going to start to fall apart. And maybe I don't have a needle and thread to put it back. Or if I did, it's never going to go back to the way it was before. Right. The fabric, it's starting to untangle, unweave, come apart. And we're starting to question the very, very, very foundation that our country was founded on. Right. And we're starting to realize that it's all false. None of it's real. It was all made up. And it was made up in the essence of what? It wasn't made up for the benefit of all, but the benefit of few. Okay? And that's why it's falling apart. It's that simple. Now, could we benefit all? I don't know. That's a whole other conversation. But let's just look at the very foundation and the fabric and how it's untangling and coming apart. Through this process, okay, I talk, like I talked about Noah, I talked about um, Moses. Noah, right, he was building this ark and he built the ark regardless of what people said about him, right? He, he was like, you know what, I don't even care what you say. Like I was given instructions, y'all think I'm crazy and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you think I'm crazy. What matters is what I believe to be true. I believe that there's a flood coming. I believe God's speaking through me. God came to me. God said, I must do this. And I'm following instruction. Okay. Here's the deal. Noah had discernment between what was what society was telling him, what God was telling him. Why? Because he was looking internally. Now, God dwells within. Instructions will be given to you if you go within your heart, if you go within yourself, if you dive deep into you. If you're looking to the external world for the answer, I've got news for you. It is flawed. When we look externally to man for answers, we are doing ourselves a disservice. <laughs> Men is flawed. We're flawed. We're not perfectly perfect. While we are perfectly perfect, how are we perfectly perfect? By looking internally, not externally. And I know that this becomes a paradox for some people, right? Or they're like, well, that doesn't make sense. You're saying we're not perfect, but you're saying we are perfect. Yes, we are. When we look internally, when we start to look externally, right? We start to look for perfection outside of ourselves. We're starting to grasp onto somebody else or look for somebody to tell us that we're correct in what we're doing. We think that we're not enough and we start to fall short of who we truly are, which is whole, perfect and complete in our own right. But going within is not always easy, right? Because in that space where the subconscious mind exists is a bunch of junk that we don't want to listen to and we don't want to hear, right? We have these skeletons in the closet perhaps. So it takes an internal journey, right? To recognize and hear the voice of God. Voice of God is that, that point, right? Where the harmony comes in, 
where there's no words to describe the experience. And so rather than calling it something, we can say that it's an experience of the thing, the feeling, the sensations, the vibrations. And in that comes instruction. We start to hear the internal voice. We start to really listen. And as we clear the cobwebs, what's next? The void, the nothing. And in the nothing, the everything exists. They call it the Akashic Record. They call it so many different names, right? But there exists, right, the ability to tap into our greatest gift. That is the purpose, the divine wisdom and purpose given through God. God says, here's your instruction. I had a friend this morning, like, people are reaching out to me. I don't know what to do. And I said, you know, people are scared. People are going through this. They're going through that. And they're reaching out to me. And she's a, she's a child of God. I said, well, sometimes that's what happens when you're a steward of God. He'll send you people. He'll send, and he'll give you instruction, but you must ask God to guide you through that. If people are showing up for me, I ask. I say, guide me, show me, help me. What am I to do? Right? So spirit and coffee is a result of that. If people listen, they listen. Sometimes there's one person, sometimes there's no people. And that's okay. It's my instruction. One day someone will understand why I spent so many hours doing spirit and coffee. Hopefully it's now that the time is going crazy because that's why I started it. In hopes that people recognize that this was coming. That the craziness is only going to get crazier. That we're going to see a big fireworks display that it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until people wake up to their divine nature, to their true self, to what really matters. That doesn't happen without spiritual principles and practices and your own internal spiritual law and grounding. When you come to that place where you hold your mighty staff and you say, I will not waver. When you put your staff down and you say, please provide me passage. Show me the path. Show me the way. And that takes a deep faith, a faith so great. And some people don't have that faith. But it's never too late because really it's a choice. Faith is a choice. And it's something that you can choose. It's not like it's, you know, it's like I tell people, it's not like there's something special about me. There's nothing special about me. I feel blessed and loved and protected and safe, but I have faith greater than I can imagine. Faith that God will come through. Faith that God will provide a passage and a path and a way and refuge. And it shows up every time. And that may not be easy for some, and that's okay. But at least stand in your spiritual practices and your spiritual grounding. At least take the example. Go back and read about Noah and Moses when they were, you know, ridiculed and crucified in their own right. Just, you know, maybe not to a cross, but they were still crucified and beaten and made fun of and spit at and told that they were crazy and whatever it was. And they just said, you know what? I know what's true for me and what I'm doing is not causing harm. I will not cause harm, right? I'm not going to cause harm to people. I'm not going to go and hurt individuals. Hey, Poetic, how are you? Nice to see you. Good morning, Rico. I don't know if you're still on here. Good morning to those who might be on Facebook. Please say good morning. I would love to say hello to you. So go back and read those stories. I think they're so valuable. You know, they're valuable in a way um, that supports us. Um, valuable in a way that reminds us that we do have the power and strength to continue on our path regardless of what the masses say to us.
that we are standing firm and that what we're doing is for the betterment of us and for humanity. That it is righteous. And I don't mean self-righteous, I mean righteous. It's the right path, right? The right path. And we know what that is, right? I'm not saying right and wrong, good and bad. I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying what is intentionally right in your heart. When you start to dig deep and you start to unveil and pull out the weeds and really look at those dark, dark moments or dark pieces within us and heal them, we get to the core of the essence of who we are, which is love. And that love itself has an intention of supporting the world and giving love and kindness back into the world. It's the righteous path. And we know we can feel it. You can feel it when you're off, right? That's what sin means, off the mark. We're just off the mark a little bit and we have to bring ourselves back. So another thing that I wanted to talk about was just what we're going through, um, you know, and I don't know, some of you guys may not be in the United States. I don't know what's happening in your countries. I don't know if you're going through, um, you know, some peril, some hurt, some, you know, whatever it is for you. I'm not sure. Um, but I feel like everybody's sort of feeling it. Now, the United States literally is up in smoke. It's going crazy here. And I think for people that are not really um, seeking spiritual guidance or are not tapping into their spiritual essence might be a little bit more afraid of what is to come. And I feel like these spiritual grounded individuals are looking to their spirituality to support them through the process. And what does that mean? That means that we are looking internally. That's what you do when you're a spiritual practitioner. You start to look internally. How do I feel about this? Hey, good morning, PBG. Good morning, Ina. In Inma. 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 <laughs> Sorry if I said that one. Um, but we start to look internally, right? And we start to, to ask ourselves these deep, deep, deep questions. How do I see myself within the experience? What is it that I get to do? Or how am I responding to this? And we start to ask ourselves those deeper questions as a spiritual practitioner. And one thing I loved because um, I started to read, I was like, I need guidance right now. God, show me guidance. And there's this very powerful book that I read from called Yahweh. And I open up, I always just open up and say, land me on the page I need to read. And it's always perfect, of course. You know, and just really reading that we are at a point where we get to, right, understand that we ourself have the trinity within us right and i love that because the trinity started to say well there's three and what is the three what's the three that dwells within us and that day um i watched online i used to go to the center for spiritual healing which is a science of mind it's based on that and i just love reverend armani she's one of the the ones who speaks right she's the reverend there and she speaks um and there was also another girl who was a practitioner and learning and she spoke and the message that i loved which really kind of goes into the trinity is that there's three selves okay and the three selves can really help us during these times Okay, there's the self, which is the big S, which is our wholeness, which is our oneness, which is our connection to God. That's the big S. Then we have the little S. Now, the little S, right, is the ego self. <laughs> so we would say that the higher self, I don't want to, I don't, I don't know if it's the higher self, but the wholeness self, the self that is whole, perfect, complete, that connects us back into our godliness, right? that when we start to pull it down, we start to see the small self and the small self is the ego. Now the ego, people are like, I don't have an ego. I'm like, yes, you do. Everybody has an ego, right? That is the experience of the three dimensional time space that we exist in at this moment. Okay. We cannot transcend the 3D space until we understand how to utilize both the small self, which comes in the form of what we see as a duality, 
Okay, and I've talked about this several times. So the small self being, right, light and dark, good and bad, right and wrong. All of these things that we see picked apart as one or the other. And internally, the emotional states of being that the small self lends to us, right, where there's those deep, dark grief and sad and depression and all the things that we've made wrong and we've called bad. And that's why I was reading that book and I still will get back to it, but there's so much going on in the world at this point. Um, Want to make sure everybody's okay. So please reach out if you're having some struggles. I love to hear people's stories. You guys are always welcome to chime in and type things out. I love it. I love when people share. So the small self being this engagement of right black white right and wrong are a duality that we think we're experiencing and we make wrong the small self and i loved it because that's what she talked about she talked about how this little s that most people deny it and that's really the core of why we see some so much distortion in the world because we deny that very internal essence we make it wrong we hide it out we pretend it doesn't exist we start to hold it in and it comes out as anger, frustration, hurt, right? We want to hurt people. We, we, we can't accept love in. I mean, I've even had the experience of an individual rejecting love when they're going through something. And that hurts me to the core. Like I've been crying for the past three days, just crying because you see people just rejecting love which is probably the purest form of communication and connection we can give to one another. And yet it's being rejected. Why? Oh, because that love says I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy. And I can't think that I'm not worthy because, and it's just that hurt of feeling that we are not enough and making it wrong or feeling the grief of I want my old life back because that happens as well. So there's despair, this grief, this pain. It's okay to feel these things. That's the, that's the whole point. We must experience this so that we can recognize both parts of our small cell so that we can reconnect to our higher self, our big S. And I liked that ability to or I like the way that she delivered that message because what it did was it reminded me that we are the Trinity. We are the three. It dwells within us, not externally, <laughs> internally. Now, it takes a lot of work. Of course it does. It's, it's not easy. It's not just you've got to work on it. It's got to be something that people say, yes, I'm committed to it. I'm committed to actually doing this work. And when they make the commitment, they're not making the commitment to do the work for everybody else. They're doing it merely for themselves. And some people don't. And to me, that's mind boggling because why wouldn't you choose you? That's why I thank you guys for choosing you. When you show up here, you're choosing yourself. You're not choosing me. Who cares about me? <laughs> I'm really here just to try to give you information <laughs> or support you or trigger something inside you that says, aha, maybe I need to look at that or I could look at that or what does that mean for me? Or maybe it means nothing for you. Oh, okay. But maybe it means something for you. And that something then helps you to get a little bit closer to your true essence in nature. People want the old, people want, it's okay to grieve over, you know, not having your old life or life not being the way you wanted it to be, or things aren't the same way, or you don't have your family or you are, you're losing people or, you know, you haven't seen your family and you're in isolation away from individuals and you, your old life isn't the same way. You're not out having drinks with your friends and having dinners and whatever your life was. Okay. My life was never that. So <laughs> my life is just kind of the same where I just stay by myself all the time. But 
you know, the, the people are really feeling the pain of that isolation. And it's really provided us a time to get clear about our small self, the little s, and really start to alchemize and overcome those things. We are powerful. And we, we, we can remember that. The, the true gold exists within us. Who cares about this money, paper money, all this stuff? And I know people say, well, we need money for this, that. God will provide. I promise you. I promise. Hold your spiritual practices and your principles. Build your boat like Noah. Whatever that boat is, that's setting the foundation, right? That was building the structure, the very structure that you will dwell within. Set those pillars of spiritual support, right? What are your pillars? What is the foundation which you lay it on? And don't waver and hold your staff and stand firm because you deserve it, because you're enough, because you're powerful and your power is greater then you probably even know. Remember, the Trinity lives within you. You need not go outside yourself. You have it internally. And that internal Trinity will synergize when you learn how to use it. Right now, people just don't know how to use it. It's not their fault. They didn't know. I had to learn how to use it. I had to learn how to love all parts of myself. And I'm still learning how to love all parts of myself. That's the work that every day we accept pieces of ourself that we denied or didn't want to look at. And that really is the healing process to accept those parts of ourself within us that we feel are broken or not enough because they're beautiful. And they're magical and they're the gems. And like I said, once we get clear about them, sometimes they become our greatest ally. They become the very fire that drives the action to our divine birthright. The very fire that drives the action to our divine birthright. And it drives us forward. If you're feeling grief and despair, it's okay. Part of life. Of course, we want things to go back to the way we were. Who doesn't? It was comfortable. Now it's time to get uncomfortable and to remember who you are. And there's discomfort in remembering that because we've been fed lies about who we are. We're not just a meat suit that goes to work nine to five and then comes home. We're so much more than that. We have the ability to tap into our God self, to transcend time space, to connect to the greater cosmos. But that takes great practice, great discernment, great courage, great strength. And it takes you looking at yourself in the mirror <laughs> and loving all parts of yourself, right? The good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, the magnificent, all of it. And I know it's not an easy task. I know because I practice and my practice sometimes is hard. <laughs> it's not always easy to practice this stuff. So there you have it. Um, Oh, I didn't see this, Ina. It is the, my first time in English. Enough for gold understanding. Sorry. And good continuation. Good morning, Betty. I didn't see you guys. I don't know if you guys are still on here. So um, there you have it. Um, I love you guys so, 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 so much. 
Um, and again, I will continue to um, uh, get on here um, and read from, I, I want to continue to read from this because I feel like we are in such a state of peril, especially in the United States and hopefully people um, from the U.S. and other parts of the world that may have, I, you know, I don't really, I don't follow the mainstream media, so I really don't know what's going on unless I am told. But if there is something going on and you guys want to discuss, please let me know, okay? Um, so I love you guys so much. I have recently retired. I've been feeling low and unmotivated. Any comments you can suggest? Oh, good. Thank you. Um, yes, I answered this before. Um, so you've been feeling low and unmotivated. Um, okay, so motivation itself um, comes from an internal desire um, or purpose, right? When we have a purpose or a desire to do something, right? So I would ask you, what is your purpose? Do you have a purpose? Do you know what you want to do? Because motivation is not something that is an external thing. Like we can, let's just say this. Motivation that we can look externally, right? And then all of a sudden we feel motivated because we've read something or saw something, but is it going to continue to keep you motivated? Really, motivation is something that's deeper than just an, <laughs> a shiny toy that's been put in front of your face. It's a deep understanding of what it is you want to do and why do you want to do it? For what purpose? So I would say, look at that. Um, I know there's a lag time in response on, on this. If it's something that you truly want to go into depth with, or if you want to email me, you can definitely do that at spiritandbrew at gmail.com, spiritandbrew at gmail.com. Here, I'll type it in. And I can send you um, a few. Um, um, I can send you a few um, questions as a life coach. I do that. That might entice your your brain to start thinking about what is motivation. So another thing I would say is get clear. What is even what does motivation mean to you? Do you even know what that word means to you? Like what does it mean? the word itself, get very clear about what motivation is. Because once we get clarity around a word and the, the very nature of it, then we start to um, get a little bit more clear about what it is we want to create as well. Clarity is important. So even understanding the word itself can support you. <laughs> Believe it or not, it does. When you start to look at the etymology of it, break it apart, what does it even mean? What is motivation? You know, are you unmotivated? Maybe you're not unmotivated. Maybe that's just a word you're using because someone said something somewhere and now you think that's what you are. Or why are you labeling, labeling yourself unmotivated? Maybe that's not the right label. Maybe you're tired. Maybe you're... Uh, don't feel well. Maybe you have chronic pain. Maybe you don't have chronic pain. Maybe you're, who knows? I don't know what the circumstances are. So it could be a lot of different things. Um, but getting clear about it is going to help you to move forward. So that's what I would say. And hopefully you're here to hear <laughs> what I had to say, Jerry. And I highly suggest that you email me because it would be easier for us to go back and forth um, because I think there's a light time on this. So um, please email me. I look forward to your email so that I can then um, just give you a list of questions to help facilitate maybe something in your mind that would help you. Because, um, yeah, retirement, that's why people work. I mean, it's all, we'll just say this before I go. That's all people know. My mom retired and she was bored, so she went back to work. <laughs> and I'm like, you want to work? But she loves it. Like, that's her thing. And that's what she loves to do. Okay, you know, <laughs> and if she wasn't working, what would she be doing? I don't know. 
Some people are just made that way and that's okay. Um, so, you know, what are you excited about? What, what do you want to do? What is it? So asking yourself those questions um, and email me and I can send you some more and get a little bit clear on your circumstances. Okay. So awesome. I love you guys so, 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 so much. Please engage, um, you know, share this. Um, I just want to, it's like I want to talk to the entire world because I want everybody to heal. <laughs> I just want everybody to experience life um, with excitement and joy, even though we're going through crazy. <laughs> <sighs> if I could just give everybody my heart. Okay, well, I love you guys. Have the best day ever. And, of course, I will be seeing you. Have a magnificent, magnetic, marvelous mm, mm, I'm trying to think of another M word, magical, I think I probably said that, mystical Monday, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.